It is with great, great pleasure we welcome back to the show House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Uh, Speaker Kevin McCarthy, I think you're on a roll. That's what I think. <laughs> and I think this debt bill turns the tables on Biden. I um, want to get your comments on all this stuff, sir. Well, I hope it does, because I sat down with the president on February 1st saying, look, Let's be rational. Let's be responsible. Let's find a path that we can raise our debt ceiling, but also lower our spending, which will in less dependency on China, curve our inflation, and protect Social Security and Medicare. And then I never heard from him for another 85 days. He said, produce a plan. Where's your plan? Well, we put our plan out, and now we've passed it. We were the only people in Washington that have raised the debt limit, but also got the biggest savings in American history with almost $5 trillion. So what I gather is, even before the vote, the final vote, the Bidens got uh, OMB to send out a, a veto circular. Yes. I don't even know if they knew what was in the thing. Uh, and then, you know, he made comments about, uh, for example, work requirements are, are wacko, uh, even though everybody, 80 percent of the you know, country wants work requirements attached to these social spending things. So where does that leave? I mean, he's going to veto the bill? Has, you haven't heard from him today, have you, or have you? I still have not heard from him. And you know this, Larry, better than anybody. He's putting our economy in jeopardy. And he's saying these outrageous things. He says our bills will, um, like, melt children's bones, bring asthma. Mm. He said work requirements are wacko. But did he quite realize, just a few months ago, the Democrats had a very big election in Wisconsin, won the state Supreme Court. They passed work requirements in Wisconsin, the entire state, by 82 percent of the vote. This is something he voted for as senator. We call this the Limit Save Grow Act. We could limit the growth of government into the future. You know who had that idea, too? Joe Manchin capped the growth at 1 percent per year. Grow the economy, the bill you love the most, H.R. 1, mm -hmm. lower energy cost. Yep. Grow and make us energy independent, but also cut the red tape so we can build in America again. Well, I like this bill a lot. Uh, I think the, the numbers are good. I think the key points are yes. good. I think the work... I mean, I like this bill a lot, Speaker. Um, today's GDP report should be some kind of wake-up call to the White House. 1.1% growth and 5% and, and inflation. Really? So I have virtually recession-level growth, and I have high, sticky inflation. Um, yep. What are you going to do about that? Well, one thing you could do is cut spending and limit government interference. By the way, uh, Kevin, the worst part of the report today was almost a collapse of business investment, which is the heart of the economy. And you got a president who every speech he gives, he attacks business, he wants to tax business, he wants to regulate business. Well, guess what? Business has stopped investing. That was one of the messages in the GDP report. You, on the other hand, have a much different message for business. And that we do rain, Zach. We rein in all his regulatory work. You know, you did a tremendous job in the White House where you were able to cut that red tape, business invested. What he did by bringing back all this regulation increased inflation by spending $6 trillion, created the inflation. And now we have an economy in a tailspin. We've got a banking community that's questioning whether they can sustain themselves because of the inflation rising up. The number one thing we do, curve the spending that we're doing. Claw back the money that's not being used like in COVID. The pandemic is over. He signed the bill if he remembers this. So why do you keep those billions of dollars out there if it's been sitting there for two years? And you know what? Get the supply chain working again. Work requirements actually bring people back into the workforce, give them a job. That makes Social Security and Medicare stronger by them paying for it. It makes the supply chain stronger. These are the things we need to be able to move forward, and it just so happens it's in our Limit, Save, Grow Act. Um, Kevin McCarthy, what, is, what are your experts, what are your staff people saying? What's the X date when the Treasury is finally going to run out of money? Is it June? Is it July? Does anybody have a sense of it up on the Hill? You know, you can guess either way, but it's whatever Janet Yellen says it is. That's why we acted early, Larry. I mean, we don't want to put the markets in jeopardy. We've raised the debt limit. So the markets don't have to be in jeopardy if they'd pass this. Schumer has followed along exactly with the president. He says, no, we shouldn't. We should just pass one that just automatically raises it. All the time when he was when he was dealing with the Republican, he would use the debt limit to get more money of what he wanted. Now he wants to change course, but he can't pass that in the Senate. 
So he has no plan. The president wants to ignore this. That, again, puts the economy in jeopardy. Mm. He should sit down with us. Let's be responsible. Let's be sensible. Let's put ourselves on an economic path where we can balance. Let's take away our dependency of China. Let's grow this economy. Let's curve our inflation. And it will secure and protect in Medicare and Social Security. Uh, Speaker, McC um, Speaker McCarthy, let me read you. You might get some help, maybe, from <laughs> the House uh, Republican uh, leader, Mitch McConnell. Uh, he's tweeted out today, House Republicans just passed a plan to rein in Democrats' reckless spending. President Biden's last phony excuse for not doing his job has run out. It's way past time for the president to sit down with Speaker McCarthy and negotiate a bipartisan path forward on the debt ceiling. Uh, have you talked to Mitch McConnell, Kevin? I did. I talked to him last night. I talked to a number of senators who were excited on both sides of the aisle, Republicans and Democrats. And I'll tell you this, even in the House, a number of Democrats have privately told me they're rooting for me. They think the president is wrong that he's not negotiating. You look at overwhelmingly Americans by more than 70 percent believe you should sit down and negotiate. This is the difference. This is the leader of the free world ignoring a major problem and creating more. This isn't the border. He can't ignore it and hopes it goes away. He's got to deal with it. The day is coming, and it's coming soon. This could be in June or this could be in July. But it is coming, and it's better you sit down early and we solve this problem and make our country stronger. Uh, Speaker McCarthy, what's the next step? I mean, how do you see this playing out? Do we just wait for uh, well, Biden, or <laughs> what happens here? <laughs> well, we don't negotiate with ourselves, but we've now... He said he, we did exactly what he asked of us. Yep. I sat down with him, wanted to negotiate. He said, no, I had to produce a plan. So I produced a plan. Then I passed the plan and sent it to the Senate. You know the way government works. The House passed a plan. Let's have the Senate pass a plan, and then we can conference, and we can put something out, and he can decide whether he wants to sign it. If not, if they just sit there and ignore it, it's the Republicans who didn't put us in any form of default because we raised the debt limit. They have done nothing, and they cannot pass a clean debt ceiling out of the Senate. I mean, if Biden doesn't like your plan, Biden now, let him push Show me plan your plan. Out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Why doesn't it's, he? Why doesn't he use his own words? Show me your plan. Yes. Do something about it. If Schumer doesn't like it, show me a plan. You can't just yeah. sit around. The country, look politically, the country is just going to go nuts against the Democrats. That's why yes. you've turned the tables. That's why this is so brilliant. You put together a package. The House Republicans are functioning. The dopes in the it, White House didn't think you would, but you've proven them wrong. Look, we're sitting on a five-seat majority. We passed the Parents' Bill of Rights, lower energy costs. We repealed 87,000 IRS agents. We created the Select Committee on China. We're just now coming back next month with a border security bill Why they're going to lift Title 42 that we could protect it in fentanyl and stop the human trafficking. We continue to work every day, and they doubt us, but we're continuing to keep our commitment to America. And the one thing I hope everybody learned from about me during the speaker's race, I will never give up. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well said. Uh, many, many thanks, Speaker Kevin McCarthy. We appreciate your time.